We're ready. Good morning. I'm Brother T.H. Farrell, pastor at Mountvale Church. You have just tuned in to Jars of Clay, our Sunday school class. We want to welcome you on board. Uh, tag some friends, call somebody, tell them, plug in, and uh, let's jump into the Word of God this morning. We appreciate you tuning in. We left off on talking about the glory of the Lord. How many understand this? Here's the problem that we have in church. It's not that we don't have church because there's churches everywhere. There's churches in America on every street corner. The problem is, is God's not invited to a lot of their churches. If Jesus showed up, they wouldn't know what to do. They'd have no idea. They wouldn't know. Amen. And a lot of people would be offended if he did show up. Uh, let me give you a for instance in this area. And I, I don't mean this in a derogatory manner whatsoever. But I have some precious, precious Baptist friends who I preach for. But the only way that most of them will acknowledge his presence is his weeping. And there's not anything wrong with weeping before the Lord. I love it. Amen. There's not anything wrong with that. But when you, when you narrow it down to the fact that all he, all you can do is, is weep. Amen. Then you cut out a whole lot of other things that happen as the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. Amen. We are Pentecostal by persuasion. Praise the Lord. We are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. We believe saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I could get into that a little later if you want to. If you have any questions, we can send you some literature on that. But the fact of the matter being is that it's, he don't always move in the midst of a shout and a dance and a run and a fall on the floor either. Amen. He's not limited to just Pentecostal ways of worship or just Lutheran ways of worship or Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian. He is God all by himself. And the key to this, amen, and I te try to teach preachers all the time is is whatever spirit that God's moving by, if it's a weeping, if it's a running, whatever it is, get in that spirit and move accordingly. Problem is, problem is we only recognize in certain ways. It's, it's God come this way in the church of God and it's the only way you can move. But God is bigger than the church of God, the Baptist, the Presbyterian, the Methodist, and the Lutheran, and all of the other denominations uh, that are uh, affiliated with Christian faith. Amen. Problem that we have is, is we don't recognize him when he shows. And I, I think that he may have came so many times to so many churches and they ruled him out and had meetings and wasn't going to allow this and wasn't going to allow it. He finally just gave up and quit coming. Wouldn't that be terrible? Wouldn't that be an all? And they wonder why nobody else comes. Listen, if Jesus is not welcome at your church, I probably am not going to stay at there either. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have a question? Say it again. The best drunk you ever got on was with the Lord. Amen. Hey, and that's biblical. Amen. Acts chapter 2, Pete. But I got to explain the Pentecostals, right? Because uh, some of our other brothers don't understand what he said right there. He said, The best drunk you ever got on was on the Lord. That's what Peter said. These were not drunk as you suppose. They were surely inebriated, but it was not on it was not on a natural wine, but it was drunk in the spirit. Help me somebody. All right, the glory of the Lord. First of all, the glory of the Lord is not a cloud. Some may, some may ask then why is a cloud mentioned almost every time in, uh, God's glory is manifested in the scripture. The reason is God hides himself in the cloud. He is, he is too magnificent for mankind to behold if the cloud did not screen out his countenance all around him would be consumed and immediately die. I want you to understand that he cloaks himself in secrecy. He makes a relationship with him hard to come by. Nobody said nothing. Just for y'all that's watching, nobody said nothing when I said that. He makes it, he makes it something that you have to seek after. He, he has me. I belong to him. Amen. I'm in him and he's in me. If you're a Christian, you're in him and he's in you. The tabernacling of God within the human body. That's what we're talking about. And the glory of God resting upon mankind. Amen. When the scripture said the whole earth is full of your glory, I'm 100% persuaded that he was talking about the glory of the Lord that rested upon mankind. Amen. And, and he makes, he cloaks himself in secrecy. He hides nuggets in, uh, in, in the scripture for you to find, to look, to study, to show yourself approved. He is God and he wants somebody that will love him. If you think with me just for a second, amen. Here's the thing for God is this right here. He wants you to love him back. He already, we already know he loves us. God commended his love toward us in Romans 5 and 8. 
that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. There's no question, John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's no question whatsoever. It was the love of God, amen, that, that propelled Jesus to a cross of Calvary, amen. Who for the joy, he said, that set before him. What was the joy that you and I could be saved and we could be a part of the family of God. Amen. For who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Help me somebody. It, we we there's not a lack of love for there's not a lack of love on God's part toward us. The lack of love comes from us to him. That's where it's at. Every ungodly act that we've ever done in our life was a lack of love toward God. David said when he sinned against you and you only have I sinned, right? And the problem with sin is, is sin is a lack of an acknowledgement of God in our lives. I'll get you in just a second, sure. He's, 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 he's omnipresent, amen? He's everywhere, all the time. He's all over this world, all over this planet, amen? There's no place he's not. He's he fills up. He fills up outer space, however much that is. Amen. For the flat Earth people, it is. She's around. I tell you, she's around. Amen. For all them people that say, they, <laughs> I want to get into. That. I read some of that stuff and I just laugh. I said, man, you got to be. You got to be really want to believe that. Or you got to really be dumb to believe that. Amen. But uh, but he fills up every and, and look he fills up in our, he fills up the dateless past all the way into the future, and when you and I are looking uh, when you and I are looking uh, in our lives toward the future and we see a grim future we should never do that because he's omnipresent he's already into the future prophesying back to you at this moment and he said th you can make it if you just get up and get yourself gather yourself together stop having a bad attitude stop looking at don't be a Debbie Downer and look at God in the future. Amen. It was God, and I might mess you up, and I probably mess up some people on Facebook Live this morning. But I want you to understand, He's not just been with me since I bowed the knee to the cross of Calvary. He was with me when I was in a drunken stupor and overdosed on alcohol and drugs. He was, he was with me when I went in. Some people say, I don't believe this. He was with me when I went in the bars. He wasn't in me, but he was with me. Hey Amen. He was talking to me then. He was saying, TH, you know better than what you're doing. Get yourself. He is God. Hey Amen. He's the one that kept, he's the one that kept that one from putting that gun to your head and blowing your brains. He was the reason you survived the car wreck when you wouldn't even call upon him then. He's God all by himself. Where's the sheriff at? Stand up, sheriff. He's going to pray over the offering. Go ahead, sir. Amen. All right, let's let's try to get back to the lesson before I get tore up again. All right, Exodus thirty three eighteen it said, and Moses said, "Please show me your glory." We we covered a little bit of this. Let's get to the rest of it. And, and God said, "You cannot see my face, nor." Shall you see me and live? Mortal flesh cannot stand in the presence of a holy God uh, in his glory. Paul said in 1 Timothy 6, he said, He who is blessed and, uh, and only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. And amen. When the Bible talks about the rapture, how many believe we are sitting on the edge? We're sitting on the cusp of the coming of the Lord. You've got to be blind not to see what's about to happen in this world. Amen. Somebody said, is Trump coming back? I don't know, but Jesus is coming back. Amen. <laughs> He's coming. Uh, and the Bible said, and this is what the Bible said, the Bible said that this mortality must put on immortality. Amen. This corruptible must put on incorruption. Why? Because we're changing clothes and changing, changing the who we are on the outside. Because the flesh, no flesh can stand in His presence. We effective immediately get a glorified body. And in that glorified body, I would like for you to know that it is fireproof. And that sounds wonderful for us who, but but it, even for those that don't go to heaven, it's fireproof. And I know people don't want you to talk about hell. It scares the children, but the children ought to be afraid. The Bible said some saving by 
fear. I want to tell the truth. Amen. I am so sick. I'm so sick of the sissified, limp-wristed, everybody's offended at Mr. Taterhead and all that crazy mess that's going on. Amen. Help me, somebody. I mean, we're so offended. I mean, we can't. We we can't even get in the car. Amen. And we and now we're trying to be less white. Have a coke and a smile. Forget about it. This is ridiculous. Hey, and listen. When when crazy people are in charge, then truth begins to leave out of the uh, out of the country. The truth is, there's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. The truth is, the only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. The only way. Get mad, take me off Facebook. It don't matter. Who cares? You you need to hear the truth. And listen, one day when you stand before God, if you don't receive the truth, you'll hear it again. They'll say, that crazy preacher, a hillbilly, down there in Tennessee, told you that Jesus was not a way, he was the way. Amen. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So what you have to understand with me is this right here. Truth is a thing that's hard to come by in the generation that we're living in. We, 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 live, we lived in such soft, sissified. I seen this thing. And look, I, I don't know where you get people to do this. At. I seen this one dude. He had on a woman's dress. He's a black dude. He's a good looking young man. He had on a woman's dress. Shoe. They said, this is the new normal. I said, it ain't going to be for me, Jack. I ain't wearing no dress. They have, they have attacked the masculinity of man. They have portrayed us on television as so stupid we can't even go get the mail. But I want you to understand, God put the man head of the household. Right? If I come to your house, if I come to your house to break in your house, I should not meet the lady of the house. I should meet the man of the house. And what we have is, is we have, a, we have an absence of truth in our society that tries to demasculate the men, try to tear apart, amen, the, the biblical form of what God said a marriage should be, a husband and a wife. We're not interested in your political correctness anymore. We don't care if you don't like us. It's the truth. It's just true. And I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be smart. But the truth will stand when the world is on fire. Could it be, could it be the reason that society hates the truth is because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when you bring Christ into the equation, it calls you out from among the world. It says you can't be, it says you can't be gay and go to heaven. Boom, take me off now. <laughs> it says you can't be a drunkard and go to heaven. It says you can't be a whoremonger and go to heaven. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot. Take me off, it'll be all right. We will tape it and send it to everybody. Somebody got something? Can't be a goat and go to heaven, what's the brother say? Not if you're bad, you can't. Amen. Hebrews 12 29 tells us that God is a consuming fire. Now when you think of that, do not consider a wood fire. You know, watch, watch this right here. I never will forget when the kids was little, they, they, you know how it comes in East Tennessee. In East Tennessee, we, we don't get, when we get a snow, we get a bad one most of the time, but we don't get a lot of them. And they was telling us, here comes one. And it was the blizzard of, what was that blizzard, 90... 93, it was horrible. And I told this guy at work, I said, look, man, all I got is a wood stove, and I, I, need, I, need, I, I need that pallet of, of, uh, of skids you got over there. He said, I was going to build something out of it. I said, well, I need it. He said, what do you need it for? I said, I, I need it. I said, oh, this storm's coming, I don't have any wood, and that's all what we heat with. At the time, that's all I had. He gave me that pallet of wood, and I, and, and, and I took it home, and I had a little chainsaw, and I held that chainsaw wide open until I blowed the thing. I ruined the chainsaw. I seized the motor up. I'm right sure, Brother John, there's a Chevrolet chainsaw. I'm not real sure, but I'm almost positive. But it blowed up, and I had like two or three little old pieces left to cut up. And, and, and you know what? In that natural fire, we set up all night long, and we fed that fire as that snow fell. And I mean that snow fell. It was so bad for, for a long time, amen, that nobody could even get out or anything. And that fire continuously had to be fed. But God's fire is not that way, amen. Not on God's part, but he's a consuming fire. It's your responsibility, amen, to stoke the fires of God. It's your responsibility. That fire that was ignited down on the inside of you 
when you came to the cross of Calvary, and I'm talking to people that are spiritual, I'm not talking to people that signed the card, baptized, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to them that was ignited on an altar that you knew you was lost and you confessed your sins and asked him to come into your heart and to receive you and you became a Christian, not by, by joining the church, but you was adopted, whereby we cry, Abba Father, into the family of God through the new birth which is in Christ Jesus. You must be born, that's the one, born again one, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about think I might be saved. Everybody's going to heaven. Talk to them. Well, sure. Of the, I'm just hoping the good outweigh the bad so I can go to heaven. No, you can't go to heaven that way. You've got to be born again to get to heaven. It's not being perfect, but it's about continuing in the faith. It's about when you fall down, you get back up again and repent and turn from your sin. Help me, somebody. And I, he said, and this is what he said. He said, the writer of Hebrews said, our God is a consuming fire. So if you've got God in your life, he's going to begin to consume some things. And young Christians don't, I mean, old Christians don't understand it. Young Christians have got to learn. We are not God and we're not, and we are not the church police. We're not the close police. We have to allow people to grow in grace and knowledge. And, and a, a lot of times we have aborted the process with people because we didn't like him kind. You know, we didn't have people. We, we just didn't like the way they looked or whatever it was. They didn't dress appropriately or they didn't like this or that about them or whatever it was. I lost four or five families when Brother Dragon came. I lost them. You know why? He had long hair and a beard and tattoos. And you know what? It kind of hurt my feelings at the time. But now, later on, as I look back, I said, Sorry, no, baby. You didn't have the right vision. No, you don't understand what God's trying to do. You don't even know him if you're going to run people off for the way they look. You don't know him. And the thing is, is I, can I tell you this? Dragon don't want to got him set teeth, baby. He done cut his hair, shaved his beard, fix and get married. He's in love. He's all shook up. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves Jesus more than the people that got mad and left because he came because he didn't look like he thought they ought to look like. I'm so sick of religion, I could puke. I hate to puke on Facebook, but I'm out anyway. But if our God is a consuming fire, Consuming speaks to the fact that it's not a it's not a microwave, just boom, I'm on fire. It's consuming. It begins somewhere and it, it works all the way to the end. And you know what God wants to do? He look, God don't God don't want to hurt your pride, He wants to kill your pride. God is trying, and as you're consumed and being consumed, anybody ever read a Big Mac? Raise your hand. Lie, y'all lying. Y'all eat Big Macs. Big you don't you don't just grab it, make it. Hey, I was talking to some guys the other day. It ain't funny, so don't get mad at me. But I mean, it ain't funny. But it is kind of uh, 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 this guy. He had he had two little bee dogs, little bee ones. And he went over to his buddy's house. He's showing this little bee dog. And that dude had a great big dog, right? And he said he said he said I had my little dogs over. And he said my buddy's big dog went over and smelled went boom in, in one bite, swallowed it whole, killed it, eat it. How many of you eat a big Mac, big Mac like that? Raise your hand. <laughs> no. It's bite by bite. And as God is working, as he's beginning to consume us, he begins to tell, he begins to dictate on the inside because he's taking authority over this flesh for you, if you'll allow him to. And as he begins to consume you, and as you begin to grow in grace and knowledge of him, you begin to realize, hey, I can't say that anymore. Yeah. Had a young man, had a young man that's coming here right now. And he's so, he, listen, he, he think he, 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 you just got to know where he came from. And he, he said an ugly word the other day. I know you ain't never, but he did. He said one, right? And, and he cried. He said, I don't want to go to hell. I said, you're not going to hell. Just repent and learn. He said, am I really saved? I said, if you wasn't saved, you wouldn't be standing here crying. God is beginning to consume. Watch this. God is consuming his language right now. God, we call it old time church of God. We call it sanctifying him. God is beginning to consume his language. You know what God did for me? And I wish he'd do for some other people. He consumed my clothes. Yes. Of course, you didn't have to eat much on some of them. <laughs> Whoa! He, uh, uh, you know what he did? He, he began, hey, let me tell you this. God will begin to consume poisonous people sometimes out of your life. Some people, you can't win. Somebody else got to win them. But God's got to get them out of your life because it's an evil influence in your life and God will consume them. And we keep running back. Can I tell somebody? I got a word from the Lord from somebody. Those that keep walking out of your life, quit running them down, begging them back in. That chapter in your life is closed and you're going to draw yourself down with them if you don't let them go. 
It ain't the end of the world. Your heart won't quit beating because they ain't coming around no more. Right? They wrote a country song about it. all my rowdy friends done write it on down. You know what that's speaking of? That's speaking of that's speaking that's speaking of a separation that comes. Listen, you know what God wants to do? God look God God wants to consume our attitudes sometimes. Now I'm preaching on the preacher today, and I'm the preacher, so I can preach on me if I want to. Right? Because sometimes we take this attitude, well, I've seen all this before. And you don't know. We got to forget what we know and let God consume us completely in our hearts and our minds, our attitudes. You know what? God is, God is consuming out of, you know, there, watch this. I seen people that, the old church over here said they wouldn't even say. I seen people that got saved and still smoked pot, and God consumed it out of their life. I saw people that got saved that were still battling with alcohol and little by little faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God and they kept coming and God consumed the alcohol. He, he didn't drink it. He took it away from them. It, it's just, I saw people that come that were addicted to porn and God, by little and little, God took it out of their lives. But you gotta let, you gotta let God consume you. You gotta be, that's why we, that, that's the problem that we have is fire's hot. Is it not? Man, I reached and got a whole uh, plate the other day at a, a Mexican restaurant. How many know they bake them things? They, I reached and grabbed that one. Whoa! I just, somebody says, that hot? I said, no, don't take me all day to feel that. About burn a blister on me. And we don't like it because when God turns the heat up and begins to pull things out of our lives, so the glory, you know what? The, the ultimate goal that God has is to pour the glory in your life. The ultimate goal for God is when you go out into the world that they say there's something different about them. You know, the ones that are different are the ones that are consumed by the fire. Matthew 3 and 11. This is my Pentecostal side for all my Facebook friends. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I am. Who she lets it, I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That fire will burn burn in your life you know what the problem is we have churches there's no fire there's no wood there's just nothing there's nothing there's i i saw i saw this catholic priest i i should play it for you sometime i saw this catholic priest and he was mad we ought to be mad he was mad and he was on fire and you know what he said he said although the the, the guy that's sitting in the white house i probably even called him the president we did not elect him in america amen they pushed this off on us amen and they can take me off for that too because it's the truth. They get mad when you tell the truth. But he said, the problem I have with him is, is he says he's a fellow Catholic. And he said, if he was really our brother, he would understand that life begins at conception. And he said that God is the giver of life. And he began, I mean, he just tore it all to pieces. And he said, you ought to be upset about it too. We ought to be upset that they're killing babies before they're ever even born. You know, and you know what upsets me? To everything, these clothes I wear, that, that iPad I've got, to the fuel I bought, everything pays taxes to kill babies all over the world, and we pay them for it. And I'm mad about it. But the consuming fire of God will tell you that homosexuality is wrong. You can have a gay church if you want one, but there won't be no consuming fire in the church. Friend of mine, good friend of mine, I love him to death. He came here, he got saved, he came out of the lifestyle, moved back where he came from and found him a gay church. Guess what he's doing now? And you know what? He called me and this is what he said. He said, you know, he said, I don't understand. He said, God don't move in that church. I said, he ain't invited there. He is not invited there. He cannot come and move across sin. He cannot do it. He can't do it. Why don't we just start it? Why don't we just start us an adulterous church where everybody, you know, I mean, why, I mean, why not? What's the difference? Let's let's have let's have us let's have us a gym meeting church. What about it? Why not? You you can have one, but you can't. You, God's not going to show up. Yes, sir. Free love, free love. It is free love from the Lord. That's as far as it goes. But you know, our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews twelve twenty nine. Now, when you when you think of that, do not consider a wood fire. A consuming fire cannot be contained. In the confines of a fireplace. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. First John 1 and 5. The type of fire that burns in your fireplace does not produce perfect light. It contains darkness. It is approachable. And you can look at it. So let's move on to the more intense light. Consider the laser beam. It's a very focused and intense light. 
but it's still not perfect light. As bright and as powerful as it is, there is darkness in laser light also. Let's consider the sun. The sun is enormous, unapproachable, bright, and powerful, but it contains darkness within the fire that's of its light. I was at a, one of those shows in Sevierville over there, and uh, I can't remember that old guy's name. He's funny, oh, he's and it's real clean stuff, and he's got that britches on, and 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 they're that big around. He ain't that big, and then britches is bouncing around, and he said he was going to be the first astronaut. You ever see that dude? And he's huh? That's him. Yeah, Elwood Smoot. And old Elwood Smoot said he was going to go to the sun. And that guy was over. He said, "You idiot! You can't go to the sun. You'll be burnt up." He said, "I'm going at night." <laughs> <laughs> I'll settle. Let that settle and sink in for a minute. Amen. I'm sorry to say I've pastored people like that. Would smooch at times in my life. Praise the Lord. The sun is unapproachable, but it still contains darkness. Paul said to Timothy that his glory is unapproachable light, whom no man has seen nor can see. Paul could very easily write this because he experienced a measure of light on the road to Damascus. He related to to King Agrippa, Acts 23, or 26, 13. At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me. That's how he described it. And you have to understand with me, amen, this is the problem. You know, the Bible said this, the problem is that light has came, it, light came, and men love darkness rather than light. That's what the Bible said. We beheld the only glory, uh, we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son of God, but we, but we rejected him. You know, somebody said, I'm sorry, church people hurt me. They hated Jesus that killed him. It was church people that killed him. And the light and, and the light that Paul was talking about was not just a physical light that everybody around him saw, but it was a spiritual light. And the problem in the church today is there's no spiritual light anymore. They're walking in darkness. Listen, when we have church rulers and church officials that are that that are saying that alternative lifestyles is okay, they're not in the light. Truth. Let's talk truth. I don't want to talk about. I'm not. I'm not interested in political correct, correctness. I want truth. And and a, a dear friend of mine. I ride bikes with him all the time. He's part of the United Methodist Church. I just throw it out there. And he's a good guy. I love him. We ride bikes together. Have a big time together. And we we kid each other all the time. He found a Wesleyan book in my truck on sanctification. And he said I need to come over and teach that class, y'all, because that's where they came from, right? And and but. But his denomination, the United Methodist, is splitting right down the middle because they have a person there who identifies neither as male nor female, who is supposedly the bishop over the whole thing, and they are, and a lot of churches are paying themselves out because they don't want to be associated with sin. They don't want to, and there's no light. There's no light in whoever that person is. I pray God save that person. Because religion will send you to hell, but relationship with God brings the light in your life that shows. Hey, listen, this is a terrible, crude illustration, but we was poor. Look at your neighbor and say poor when we grew up, right? And I want you to understand, I want you, I want you to understand, there was one family in the neighborhood that was poor than we was, and they didn't make it. They started plumb deaf. We liked to die. We didn't have nothing. But poor people back in the 70s had roaches. I know you ain't never had none. We used to have them. We fought again. Or we could afford oak. Uh, we, we was our own orkin team. We stomp them things when we seen them. You ain't never had none. That's okay. That's all right. I don't have them now. You can come see me, right? But we had them. We had them back in the day. And you know the thing about them things was when you turn the light on, man, them things scattered. Yeah. That's sin. It, it's the same as sin. Because, see, when the light comes, sin has to leave. And that tells me that those churches that allow people in leadership that won't even identify as a male or female, God made that woman a woman. And she's trying, she's saying, I'm smarter than God. and I'm go That's what this whole gender, gender identity is. It's saying God don't know what he's doing and I know what I'm doing. And that dude that looks like a lady, you know, the guy that Biden put in there, he's still a dude. I don't care what he says. And he gets up and he's talking about gender reassignment for young people and start doing Start doing puberty blocks on kids at 10 years old. That's sit straight out of hell. That's sit straight out of hell. Truth. Touch your neighbor and say, he tell them the truth. God made you who you are. Be who you are. I'm an ugly, fat, old white man. Right? And I ain't going to be less white. I'm white as you can be. You shut up, boy. Shelly. I heard that. <laughs> but but you, have to, you have to understand. You have to understand. When you see... When you see major denominational systems 
that say it's all right. We think of, uh, uh, let's just go here. It's just, we made some mad. Let's make everybody mad. It, when they when when they won't take a stand and say drinking alcohol is wrong, you know why? When the light comes, the roaches run, baby. And there's no light because if there was light, they would see that was wrong. If there was light, they would see you cannot ordain a homosexual to be in ministry. Nor can you ordain an adulterer or fornicator either. When the light of Jesus Christ comes, it drives out. Paul said it was at noonday, O king. It was at noonday. When there was a light hit me brighter than the noonday sun. And you know what it did? It called him out of religion unto relationship unto God. That's the problem with denominational systems. They don't have relationship. They have religion. There is a difference. You can have religion and live in sin and get mad at me. Sometimes turn me off, right? It's okay, you can turn me off. But it'll meet you in the judgment one day. Because relationship with God is that light that hits that makes every and let's call sin, let's just call sin what it is the roaches that'll run then. Well, and you know why you come to church? You come to church that the light of Jesus Christ is preached. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And you see yourself. I ain't been following you around. I don't have time to follow you. Right? I, and if I did and seen you do it, I wouldn't preach on it. Not on purpose. Yeah. You know, I see this little boy, and uh, he was wanting some cookies. And his daddy said, what's the magic word? He said, I'm offended. <laughs> it's the truth. We're so offended at everything. Just let me live like hell. Don't you tell me the truth. I'll be mad at you for telling me. I'm going to tell you the truth. When the light comes on, sin leaves. Right. Not that we don't ever sin. Not that I lost my ability. I lost my desire right. for sin. And when I fall down, and you fall down, the light of Jesus Christ illuminates that to me that I need to get it out of my life. Ask you a question. Have you ever heard a homosexual preacher preach The question was, for those that, that couldn't hear, have I ever heard a homosexual preacher preach? I, I, well, I... Okay, uh, I heard a lesbian woman one time, just a clip of her sermon, and she said, "This is what she said. She said, I, she said, I'm going to tell you in the next 15 seconds what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said about homosexuality." She folded her arms and said, "Anything?" She said, "He did not say anything about it." I said, "No, but his father destroyed cities for it, right?" And Paul declared it in Galatians 5, 1 Corinthians 6. He said, no, you're not, as I've told you in times past, that they that do these things, not just homosexuality. It said, shall not. There you go for the Calvinist. It said, you can't, you can't do these things and go to heaven. Calvinist said, don't matter what you do, it does matter, according to what Paul said and what he wrote. I said, good little old sister, uh, I'm going to get her to come. She's a little pastor. Uh, we went through the Miss Early Intern program together. She's a little black lady. She's precious. She's a preacher. She put something on there about against um, uh, once in grace. And man, they lit it up. And I was throwing scriptures. I mean, I was bombing them, son. I bombed. I was. I was helping to fight it. You know what I mean? But the problem with the problem is, is, is uh, once grace is a teacher. The Bible said, the the, the Bible said that grace teaches us to not to deny worldly lust and ungodliness, right? And the grace of God calls us out. It empowers us to come out. It not only helps us through those times. It helps us to get out of it. Now, you got another? Yes, the reason why I'm asking that question is I have not stood before a homosexual and listened to preaching. And I think that's what you're talking Well, it's there's. Well, listen. The Bible said, "As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God." And there's a difference, children, between a, a, a message that comes from God and a lecture. They give religious lectures. There's no spirit in it. 
So there's no comparison. You can't compare. You, they're not going to get tore up and preach on themselves. They're not going to do it because the Spirit's not there. So that's what we just, we've been talking about. The Lord ain't showing up in a mess like that. He's not going to do it. He's not, listen, He's not going to put His seal of approval. I'll get you in a second, but He's not going to put His seal of approval. Last, uh, last Sunday night, the, sing, the song, the Spirit of the Lord was moving on redemption. Every song that they sung, watch, pay attention. Look in the Spirit with me sometimes. And as they were singing about redemption, the Holy Ghost was fall and fall. Fall and it was like tidal waves hitting a building, amen. And, and and I and I was smart enough to know I couldn't take that spirit and preach the message I had. I said, Lord, I cannot preach the message I got with the spirit that's here. There's going to be some exhortation, but somebody's got to make a move. That's what I was saying. So with with that, to answer that question is is they're not in the spirit. They're giving religious lectures. They're trying to dazzle you with their intellect. See, and that's why uh, Festus said when Paul was uh, at the judgment seat right there, we were there, I was there last year at the judgment seat, and, and, and Festus says, much learning hath made you mad. Yeah. Makes me mad too when him dry hides get up there and try to lecture me, right? He said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth words of truth and of righteousness. And if preaching is not preaching and teaching is not teaching if it's not inspired by the Spirit. That's how they get away with it. That's the, because there's no spirit. When the light come on, if the light really came in their life, they'd have to get that out. I mean, really, how long can you live in sin? When you do something and you know it's wrong, how long? What happens? Effective immediately. You've got to do something. Why? Because there's a light down on the inside of me that says I can't live in darkness no more. It's calling. Hey, and listen, it's part of the consuming fire. We're continuously being consumed. Can I just tell you that there were things I allowed in my life when I first got saved that I'd never allow right now? You've got to grow. You've got to learn. And if you're not growing and learning, then you're not in the light. Right? Oh, that's a good one. He said they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. The form will allow you to live any way you want to live. That's why the Bible said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know what? And they, and they, have, they have been conformed to the world and watch the news. Can I tell you, turn the news off. How long are you going to let me sit in your living room and tell you lie after lie after lie? And you just say, Come on over at 6 o'clock again, Brother Tate, lie to me some more. You ain't going to do it. And I ain't watching it. My wife turned on own this morning. It's probably the only one that conservatives can really watch. Fox News sold their soul to hell. Forget them. Don't even watch them. Watch CNN before Fox because all you got to do is watch CNN and take the exact opposite and you'll know what's really going on in the country. But turn the mess off. You'll live longer. You'll be happier. You'll have more peace. You won't be aggravated and mad all the time. And, and the problem that we have is, is we've conformed our minds to the ways of the world. Yeah, I'm in this woke generation. Yeah. Did you see that guy? Pray the Lord, I think. Was he in Kentucky? Where was he at? Well, I took a knee to the anthem, and uh, he was over to the college, and he suspended the game, everybody, and fined them and everything. I said, good for them. So, man, he said, listen, I'm sick of being pushed around because I believe what's right. I believe what's right. I believe what the book said. If you don't believe what the book said, man, you're going to have some problems. I love you, I'll be good to you, but you're never going to get me to conform to your way of thinking that everything's okay, because it's not okay. See, watch this right here. Conformity to the Word of God will change your life. It brings the light of Jesus Christ inside you that the world, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to put the truth out, the light out. They want you to conform to their way of thinking, and their ways is death. Hey, I, I'll just tell you this right here. Hey, I, listen to me. If, you, if you've had it, it's I, I'm not... If, you, if, you, if you've had the vaccine, what part to you? It's up to you. They're not putting that in me. They're not going to do it. I'm not going to have it. They're not going to have it. Hey, when you got less than 1% chance of dying of COVID and a 3% chance of dying of the vaccine, I'll take my chances with the COVID. Do, do your homework. Do the homework. And, and here's the thing. Watch this right here. And, and this is where we're at. Listen, they want, they want world control. So they create a world crisis. It's called globalism, and 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 then and and they and they and can I just tell you this? I was I was in.
infuriated. It made me so mad I'm going to go on a diet. Went and got my mess the other day. It doubled since old Biden got in there. It doubled. My, my medicine doubled. How long, has this, how long has the rascal been in there? My medicine doubled. Gas is shot straight through the and, and it made me mad. It made me mad enough. I said, I got to do something. I can get off this blood pressure medicine. I got to get off of it. It's ridiculous. And they hold the world hostage and say we're in a pandemic. Can I just tell you, watch, look at, look, all of the symptoms now, not now, because they're ready for everything to get back to normal, because they hated Trump, because he was against. The reason they hated him was because of human trafficking. The reason they want to tear the wall down, and the reason they want to tear the wall down uh, on our southern border down there is because they can't steal the babies to rape them. Hollywood, our political system, 800,000 go missing every year, and nobody can't find nobody. The devil is a liar. This is truth. You want the truth? If you don't want the truth, turn me off right now on Facebook. Just cut it off. Well, I'll just call this the truth class. And the problem that we have is nobody wants the truth. When the light comes on, that's what them rats and, pol and politicians are running right now. When Trump came in, light came that people could see what they're really doing. Hey, listen, you can find it if, you, if you're sick enough to go look at it. The little girl Hillary Clinton killed. It's on there. It's a video. She killed it. Her and whom Aberdeen did. Cut its face off and put the face on and danced around the kid. Go look it up. It's ridiculous. Sin is abounding in this country. Truth is, a, truth is hard to find. But the truth of the matter is God is still in control. He's still moving by His Spirit. If you're in a dead church, get out of the dead church. Go where Jesus Christ is exalted Lord of all. Amen. Amen. So I ain't going to get to preach this afternoon so I'm, I'm practicing. I don't know what time is it. It's time to go, but I don't want to go. I want to stay a while. The problem we have in our society is there's a lack of truth. When the light comes, truth comes. Sin is revealed, and we know how, as men and women of God, we should live. And if you go to a church and they give you a good lecture, make you feel good in your sin, get out and run. Somebody that's near and dear to my heart goes to a very liberal, liberal, liberal church. Made a comment to somebody just the other day about drinking, about fornication. That didn't really matter. They know better than that. It does matter. You know what that says to me? There's no light in your church. There's no light in your life. There's no spirit. You can't go to heaven without Jesus in your heart. And he listen, he don't want he don't want weekend visitations. He's wanting full custody, children. He wants full custody. Amen. Anybody got a question or comment before I let you go? Hey, Facebook, I appreciate all of our Facebook listeners tuning in. Hey, man, even those that turned me off during the midst of all of the truth that was coming forth this morning, remember Christ is the light of the world, and when He illuminates something in your light and makes life and makes you see it, get it out. You know what that says? That means you are really a Christian and He really lives inside you. And if you live in sin and you don't have any repercussions and you don't feel bad about it, go find a church that's preaching the truth and get born again and you won't have that problem any longer. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being in Sunday School. Sunday school. God bless you. See you next week. <clears throat>